I don't think, I don't think we... Welcome to Duluth First United Methodist Church. We are located in Gwinnett County, a half mile east of historic downtown Duluth. We are a congregation that believes in relationships. Quite simply, we seek to nurture our relationship with God and with others through weekly worship, small groups, and fellowship. Each Sunday, we offer traditional worship in the sanctuary at 8.30 and 11 a.m. and a contemporary service in Hinton Hall at 11 a.m. Here at Duluth First UMC, all are welcome, whether it is in our weekday preschool, children's ministries, youth groups, adult groups, or our mission ministries, we invite you to find your place. We would truly love to have you here with us. Good morning and welcome to worship at Duluth First United Methodist Church. We're delighted that you have joined us. It looks warm. The sunshine is fabulous and there's plenty of warmth in here. So I hope you will stand and greet one another and tell your friends how glad you are to see them in worship today. ushers have handed out the attendance pads and if you would please sign in pass it down to the neighbors next to you and when it makes it to the end would you pass it back please so that you can note the names of those folks 
seated on your row. And for those of you who are joining us online, please click on the link and let us know that you've been a part of our worship service today. That would be lovely. I encourage you to take out your Sunday supplement. Uh, today, there's several things that we need to point out. There is also an insert about for later in the service, so make sure that's handy for the reaffirmation of baptism. But if you would, open up inside, and right at the top of the first page is the coat drive. We want to make sure that you're aware that we're collecting outerwear for the students at Duluth High School. You can leave those coats uh, uh, in the fellowship hall, Dorothy Rainey Fellowship Hall right over here, or if you come in the back doors, there's a place near my office, so that would be great. Just come in and take a right. There, that's the place. And then at the bottom of the same page, we're having more Christmas. Our chamber chorus is doing, a chamber choir is doing their Christmas concert that had to be delayed next Sunday. It'll be at 2.30 right here, so make sure that's on your calendar. And the other thing that we would like to invite all of you to be a part of is our aging seminar. It's in the middle of the next page. It's happening on Saturday, January the 27th. We do need you to register for it. There's not a cost, but we do need you to register. And we ask that you do that by Wednesday, January the 24th. Now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of God. invited to join in the call to praise found in your order of worship, please rise in spirit or body. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord.
us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Come before the Lord with singing, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come before the Lord His praise is singing, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to the Lord, come to the Lord and sing, Alleluia, Alleluia. Zirkel are missionaries in Costa Rica. They are United Methodist ordained elders and we have been supporting them for um, over 15 years. They are the pastors of the church there uh, in their city in Costa Rica. They're the pastors of the United Methodist Church there. They have a high school that they run and an elementary school and they also run a children's home for orphans there. So they do a whole lot of things with not a whole lot of money. And it's impressive the work that they do. 
and we are grateful that we have the opportunity to support them with our gifts and our tithes and our offering. And there is some interest in possibly going to Costa Rica on a mission trip. So if that is how God is speaking to you, I encourage you to ha uh, seek out Reverend David Burchett and talk to him about the possibility of being a part of that. Our ushers are coming now to receive our tithes and our gifts and our offerings. If you are joining us online, there is a link that you may click to make your gift. Let us pray. Once again, Lord, we hear how our gifts are making disciples of Jesus Christ. Help us to give generously for the transformation of the world. Amen.
Will the children please come forward for the children's message? Can you wave to the kids at home? Are you all awake? Kind of? Okay. I've got a hard question for you. What is faith? Faith is believing in something. Faith is believing in something. Very good. Anybody else? Well, that's a good enough answer. I don't think I could have given one, give one any better. In the morning when you get up, do you expect your mom to get breakfast for you? Yes? So does she always do it? <laughs> Sarah? <laughs> okay, Emily Ann doesn't like the food she makes, so she fixes her own. You don't like scrambled eggs? Okay. But your mom tries, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so you have faith that mom will fix breakfast for you. Okay, all right. So on Sunday morning, why do you all come running to me? For candy. For candy, right. And for hugs, right. Do I always have the candy? Yeah, most of the time. Most of the time. So you have faith that I'll bring you candy. But I don't always follow through, do I? Every once in a while, I forget. Or I won't have, or my little bag will be empty. Or have the only things you don't like, right? Yes, yeah, sometimes. But who is always faithful? Who can you always have faith in? God, right. We get up this morning. We got up, right? So God was faithful. Here we are. It's nice and cold this morning, wasn't it? Will it still be cold tomorrow? Probably. Will it still be cold in a month? No. And why? Seasons change and God makes it different. Yeah. So we can be have faith in God that the seasons will change. And some days are warm, some days are cold. But who's always there? God. God's always there. So we can trust God to always be faithful to us. And we need to have faith in God. It's a two-way street sometimes, and that's hard to understand too, but even as you get older, that's hard to understand sometimes. But God is always faithful, and we should always try to have our faith in God. Sometimes we don't, but we should always try, okay? Now, I have something for you, and what's the bag? Candy. The candy bag, okay. You each get one piece, but I need this promise first. I promise... Boys, I promise <laughs> not to open my candy until mom or dad says it's okay. Got it? Now you, you really promise? You got that, Keenan? They're promising. <laughs> okay, after the prayer, you can pick a piece and go sit down, okay? Praying hands. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you that we can always trust you and have faith that you are there for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise in body or spirit for the reading of the scripture. 
The scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the, door, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. As this text begins, it begins on Easter day. Jesus has been crucified and has risen. And this text takes place then on Easter Sunday in the evening in the house where the followers of Jesus, the disciples, have gathered. They're in the upper room, and Thomas wasn't there when Jesus first appeared to the disciples in the upper room after his resurrection. And so when the disciples told Thomas they had seen the Lord, he said, you've been listening to those women again. When the disciples shared with Thomas their faith that they had seen the Lord, they were met with unbelief. But they weren't the first to be met with unbelief. Those women that Thomas was referring to were the first to be met with unbelief. When they went to the tomb and found it empty, and they went and told the disciples, the disciples considered it an idle tale. It's interesting that the first people who shared their faith the women, Mary and the others who arrived at the tomb, the disciples in the upper room when they talked to Thomas, the first ones who shared their faith were met with unbelief, right down the line. And if any of the other disciples had been in Thomas's shoes, they would have reacted the same way. If they hadn't been there when Jesus appeared in the upper room, it wasn't that Thomas doubted it was that he had not seen. Jesus ends up providing what Thomas needs to believe, just as he did with all the other disciples, just as he always does. I mentioned last week that when Thomas didn't share the faith of those who said they'd seen the Lord, they didn't kick him out. They kept loving him. They allowed him to be a part of them until later he had the same experience. Jesus honored the efforts of the other disciples not kicking Thomas out by giving Thomas what he needed. Believing is hard, but Christ doesn't ask the impossible. Christ provides what we need. There are various capacities of belief. We are each a unique creation of God, a unique human being. There are various styles of belief, various personalities. As the scripture says elsewhere, there are various strengths and weaknesses. 
1 Corinthians, there are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who manifests each gift in everyone. Look at the difference among those first ones who experienced the risen Christ. John, the writer of this gospel, when he arrives at the empty tomb and sees the folded grave clothes there, believes right away. Peter, who's coming up behind John, the leader of the disciples for the most part, Peter doesn't know what to think. When he sees the empty tomb, he goes back home and doesn't say anything. Mary, the very first one who got there before these other two did, the very first one to see the risen Christ. When she first sees him, she thinks he's the gardener. She says, can you tell me where they've taken his body? She thinks that someone has stolen his body. And she doesn't recognize that it's Jesus until he says her name, Mary. All the other disciples, different personalities, different ways of believing and capacities of belief. Thomas, when he finally does see Jesus, experiences him personally. Thomas believes through seeing. And for us today, we recognize that even seeing is not necessarily believing, if we're smart. Because there are tricks, there are holograms and photoshops and doctoring of videos such that a video could be made of you making it look like you're saying something that you didn't say. Seeing is not necessarily believing. But Christ gives us what we need to believe. In Luke, Luke tells of the rich man and Lazarus. And when they die, Lazarus goes, Lazarus is a poor man, he goes to the bosom of Abraham, and the rich man, Dives, goes to Hades. And in this afterlife, the rich man, because of his suffering, he says to Abraham, can you send Lazarus, the poor man, to my brothers who are still there on earth to warn them? And Abraham says to the rich man, they have the scriptures. They don't need me to send Lazarus. And the rich man says, oh, but if you send Lazarus back from the dead, they'll believe. And Abraham says to the rich man, if they don't believe the law and the prophets, neither will they believe someone coming back from the dead. Jesus doesn't demand belief or even command belief. Look at what he says. It's a beatitude. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Happy. It's an affirmation. Happy are those who believe. Blessed are we who believe where we have not seen. And well, we say we have not seen, and yet we have this gospel in front of us, which John says is written expressly so that we'll see these signs and that we'll believe in Jesus as the Messiah and that through believing we'll have life in his name. We do have signs. We have seen, we see every day. God gives us signs in nature, the beauty of the, the seasons, the glory of God's creation. We have seen in the love that we receive and the love that we can give. As the scripture says, we love because God first loved us. And when we share love in our family or with our friends, that's God at work. And the transforming work of God is in Jesus' command to love your enemies. If we ever get there, the kingdom of God will have come on earth. In music, the music that David and our choir and Sarah and others have just shared, we, we see God. That doesn't happen without the Holy Spirit. We have seen, we see God in our conscience and there is conscience that is universal, deeper than cultural differences that God has created in the human being that we are. There was a woman I knew named Wendy and her mother died unexpectedly and Wendy was in the funeral home. 
And she tells me this story that she was distraught, not only because of her mother's death, but because of the unexpectedness of her mother's death. And she asked someone, where's the chapel in a haze? And she went into the chapel and she got on her knees and she just said, please God, take care of my mother. And she said, I felt an incredible peace come over me in that moment. And I knew that my mother was with God and that she was okay. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the same Spirit that was with me in the eighth grade, as I've shared with many of you, when I watched a crude reenactment of the crucifixion that my youth group was doing in my home church fellowship hall. And I saw my eighth grade friend with the cross on his back stumbling up onto the stage. I experienced the presence of Christ. God does give us signs. That's God's prevenient grace, grace that goes before us, always drawing us to God. Prevenient comes from the words pre, which means before, and veni, which means to go. God's prevenient grace goes before us, always drawing us to God through these experiences and what we see and hear and feel always leading us to God. Everything we do is a response to God's action. Sometimes we just don't recognize it right away. But happy are those whose faith is so strong that they become signs to others of God's presence. I remember a poster in my home church when I was growing up in youth group, and it said this. I think it was a picture of a candle, and it said, darkness gives faith its chance to glow. Blessed are those who themselves serve as a sign of God when no other signs appear to be readily evident in times of suffering, stress, darkness. None of us can really believe in God unless we experience God firsthand. We have to recognize and feel God coming to us. That's what Jesus is about. Our relationship with God needs personal experience to have depth, to make a difference. But our relationship with God also needs others sharing to have integrity for it to make sense. Last week we talked about how people come to faith through people. That's how God reaches people. But God gives us what we need. As we mature, we become signs of God ourselves, and through us, God gives faith to others. But let's remember, often people don't believe, at least not at first. That's not new, as we see with Thomas and with all of the disciples when the women first shared what they'd experienced with them. The rejection or indifference of unbelief shouldn't slow our efforts to invite others to follow Jesus' commission. The first people who ever heard the good news didn't believe it either. But eventually, they did and what a difference that made. We can't believe on our own. Sometimes we act as if faith is something that we conjure. But we need not fret. We don't have to conjure anything. We're not making anything up. Christ wants to give you faith. And I pray that you'll be open to receiving Christ's help in your believing, and that in believing you may have life in His name.
please find the insert in your order of worship for the reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant. Your part is in bold. And following the spoken parts, all who are baptized and have renewed their vows are invited to come to one of the stations. You will be directed by the ushers. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's spirit has been poured out upon water, water poured over and immersing us, water that flows freely for all who will receive it, water from the streams of God's saving power and justice, water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness, water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today we come to the waters to renew our commitments in each other's presence to Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. And so I ask you, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? Renounce. Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? We accept the freedom and the power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are and in all that you do? We will remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? We affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Even so, God is. Let us pray. Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Healing river flows. Your spirit flows where you will. We cannot stop you, God. But sometimes we try. We try to block the flow. We redirect the winds of the spirit. Or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. We are dry and thirsty, O oh God. Come and refresh us. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew us in the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters make us long for your coming reign. Most holy God, Abba, Father. Glory to you. Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord. Glory to you. Spirit of fire, spirit over the waters, spirit of holiness. Glory to you. Eternal God, one in three and three in one. All glory is yours, now and forever. Amen.
Our sending hymn is We Walk by Faith. You can find it printed in your order of service or on the screen if you're worshiping online. We want to invite you to join the church if you're not already a member. Please consider coming up as we sing the last verse of this hymn. We'd love to have you join our fellowship here. And if you've been a member of a Christian church in the past, simply tell me the name of that church and we'll transfer your membership from there to here. If you've never been a member of a Christian church, but you've accepted Christ as your Savior and want to follow Christ as your Lord, tell me that when you come and we'll receive you on profession of faith. Those of you who are worshiping online, you can see the phone number and the email for the Reverend Beth Sugar on the screen. We'd love for you to contact her about joining the church. Please, in body or spirit, stand as we sing, We Walk by Faith. Let us go in peace and let us be open to God giving us faith. Amen.